giant orange records. Record, 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 record. So tonight I want to go through some of my most played records of 2023. Some of these I've had for a very, very long time and I may have just rediscovered them this year. Some of these I've recently acquired and just listened to the heck out of them. And you may be wondering, why do I have so many records? Well, I guess you like what you like and you fall in love with what you fall in love with. You just can't really help it. Sometimes I feel a little guilty for not spending enough time with my records or even spending money on this stuff or the late nights spent listening to album after album and sacrificing my sleep, but it truly sounds so much better than streaming. And once you hear the golden sounds of a decent stereo system fill the room with music that warms your soul, there's no going back. In the end, there has to be some kind of a destination. Where is this taking me? Well, as a musician, who comes up with original ideas and is also a recording artist who likes to record a lot of songs myself, or at least demo songs myself. I've learned a lot from these records to see what works with songwriting and production and how all the pieces fit together in this crazy jigsaw puzzle. Hearing music in high fidelity and actively listening for things like tape edits and little studio nuances is really enjoyable as much as listening to the music itself and just feeling it and letting it help me process my own feelings, whether they're good or melancholy or what have you, the whole gamut of everything in between. But a lot of times I'll be listening to a record and I'll lift the needle off and pick up a guitar or sit down at the piano and start coming up with ideas that I've just been inspired by and then it helps me come up with more ideas and I kind of take that into wherever it leads me. So I'm going to start off with a couple of 45s here. This one is called It's Up To You by The Creations. This is a little uh, folky garage rock song from 1965. And this was one where I remembered Sometime this year that I had this and I looked through boxes and boxes and boxes of 45s and I just couldn't find it. Then I finally found it. Kind of reminds me of the Buffalo Springfield and kind of influenced by the early Beatles, but they definitely have their own sound. And gosh, I really fell in love with this record. It's Angel of the Morning by Marilee Rush. This came out in 1968, and man, it is a well-produced and beautiful song. I think I'm gonna give this to a dear friend as a Christmas present. And then another 45 that I found that I just could not stop listening to was uh, California Girls by the Beach Boys. This is two minutes and 37 seconds of pop perfection. And then Let Him Run Wild is the B-side. It's a, another great song that kind of predates Pet Sounds a little bit, but it kind of shows you what direction Brian Wilson was going with his songwriting and production. And this is a mono reissue, probably from the 70s. So this is my copy of Odyssey and Oracle, the wonderful, wonderful Zombies album. This is on Date Records, and this is a believe a second press, which has this alternate cover. It's just a zoomed in version. Uh, unfortunately, this song has a major, major scratch on Beechwood Park and Brief Candles. And those happen to be my favorite two songs on this record. So I'm eventually gonna have to scrounge up and get a nice reissue or maybe track down an original. But again, this is the second press on date. BG 1969. I paid four bucks for this at a flea market many, many years ago. Mashed potatoes and gravy by The Venture. So one goal that I have for myself is to collect every Ventures album. I know that's pretty ambitious and it might take me the rest of my life, but this is a really good one on Dalton Records. I found this at a, a yard sale earlier this year. And man, I've really been listening to a whole heck of a lot of Ventures in 2023. This is a great one by Loretta Lynn. I like them country. 
I think this one is from 1965. It's a very short album. It's probably like 25 minutes long or less. It's on Decca. Really, really great stories and really wonderful performances. I mean, her voice alone is just to die for on this record. And I know I've been talking about the Beach Boys a lot, but I really, really spun Pet Sounds a lot for the first time this year after neglecting it for many, many years. I upgraded my copy. That's my thrift store copy with the messed up God Only Knows. Uh, this was a much nicer copy I found at the local record store. It's 1966 mono. I mean, the, the depth and the range of songs and music and emotions and all that good stuff that's in this album it takes you to a really special place. Really got back into uh, Harry Nilsson after also not listening to him for a very, very long time. This is, I believe, a second or third press of Aerial Ballet from 1969. Just, man, Nilsson's probably my favorite male vocalist of all time. He just had an incredible range and really, really has a beautiful voice. The Pretender's first album. I picked this one up about a year or two ago and my mind is blown every time I listen to this for how good it is. Um, I also read Chrissy Hines' autobiography this summer. It's really interesting. She spends about 5% of the book talking about The Pretenders. And then when the pre original lineup of The Pretenders came to an end, the book ends. Everything else in her book is her life up to that point, which is pretty interesting. They came up with some incredible, incredible music. And uh, James Honeyman Scott is one of the tastiest guitar players for lead guitar. Then I also reread Lester Bang's book, Psychotic Reactions and Carburetor Dung this year, which led me to dig up my old copy of White Light, White Heat by the Velvet Underground. I believe this is an original press that I got at Sounds Good Music many, many years ago when Andy still um, owned it when he was still around. And uh, yeah, man, uh, Lady Godiva's Operation is probably my favorite song on this record. I love how experimental this is. It's not my favorite Velvet's record, but it's hard to pick a favorite. And um, just every record of theirs is incredible and very important to the history of rock and roll and punk rock and experimental music. Back from the Grave, Volume 1, I moved uh, into a different place at the end of 2022. And this was the first record I spun at my new house, my new old house. And uh, I've been spinning it a lot, Back from the Grave. It's a on Crypt Records. It's a collection of 1966 punkers. Um, they're kind of digging up, I don't know, they take a lot of digs at other genres, if you will, like art rock, indie pop, MTV, Jimmy and Janice, Glad You Died. I mean, that's a little extreme, but uh, it's probably all meant in uh, good humor. Uh, they don't like disco, rap, or jazz, or Genesis, or Woodstock, or Bowie, or Elton, or heavy metal, or... Blow me, <laughs> says heavy metal blow me. Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde, again, when I was about 20 or 21, I probably listened to this record on a daily basis. And uh, I just kind of wore it out. Uh, this is a 1970 reissue on Columbia. And uh, yeah, man, I've been revisiting this. Uh, what's fun about double albums is I'll just pick a random side and play it and maybe then put something else on and not play the entire album because it's a little overwhelming to listen to an entire double album in one sitting. But if you play one side, then play another record and maybe another record, then pick another side of the same record, it can be a fun way to do this. And that's part of what makes vinyl so interesting is there are no rules, or maybe you just want to play two songs off of it and then go play something else. You can do whatever you want with your records. Just don't scratch them. This is an Australian band called The Frowning Clouds. Um, gosh, I've been listening to this one a lot. The album is called Whereabouts, um, and it actually has a giant orange on the label of the record. Really great, like a lot of like 12 string lead riffs and stuff. It's a, 
a little lo-fi and a little muffly, but that just kind of adds to the ambience and the atmosphere. These guys killed it. I think they were active in around like 2012 or so. I think that's when this came out. I think this is a reissue from a little bit later on. First time I heard the song Shoe Suede Blues, I just immediately fell in love with this band and I've been listening to them nonstop since. Another uh, English indie pop band, also very influenced by the Velvet Underground, is Ultimate Painting. This album came out in 2014. I think I heard about them in 2015 and just mail ordered all their stuff from Trouble in Mind Records. They made two more records after this and then they parted ways, unfortunately, but the first one is still my favorite, Ultimate Painting, self-titled. It's like very almost kind of simple Velvet Underground type stuff, but with a more indie pop thing. And because it's so simple, it's actually complex. And I don't really know how to explain that other than say, you should probably check these guys out. The Trog's Wild Thing. This is an incredibly good record. And I, I thought, man, I've heard Wild Thing so many times. How many more times do I have to hear it? But it's still a great song if you can overlook the overexposure of that song. And it kind of makes all these other songs feel even more special. Like From Home, I just sing Hi Hi Hazel with a girl like you. My favorite song on here is called Our Love Will Still Be There. Just killer, killer fuzz guitar. And again, it's like a fun, simple song, almost like a Ramones type simple, but it kind of turns around on itself and that makes the simple not so simple, but who cares? This is a good time. And possibly also Lester Bangs dedicating a whole chapter in Psychotic Reactions and Carburetor Dung made me revisit this album, which I um, got from the John Allure collection. My friend, uh, friends Tom and Sherry gave me some of John's old records. This was another dollar bin baby from ages ago that I probably got this and never listened to it. It's We Five, You Are On My Mind, folk rock from the Bay Area of San Francisco, about 1965 or so. I think You Are On My Mind is the only song that has drums on this entire album. The rest of it is just like acoustic guitars and upright basses and five part harmonies, which are very, very impressive. They do a lot of uh, traditional songs on here, but um, it is a, a great record. And again, this one goes by in a breeze. I don't think there's too many songs that go over the two or three minute mark here. And speaking of harmonies from California from the 60s, the mamas and papas were sort of the kings and queens of that. Um, I re-fell in love with Monday Monday this year. And uh, my old friend uh, Shecky used to always tell me that after that long pause towards the end of the song, Denny sings this really out of tune note. He's like, I can't believe they, they let him sing that out of pitch. But uh, anyway, that's a fun listen. This also has Go Where You Wanna Go and Got A Feeling. This is their debut album. Um, <clears throat> and again, like talk about vocals, stacked vocal harmonies. It's just done so beautifully. And they broke a lot of ground in that department. Oh yeah, I guess California Dreamin' is on here too. Here's an old one that I've had for a long time. This is the Soul Survivors, When the Whistle Blows, Anything Goes. Uh, this is a soulful, psychedelic garage rock record, and uh, it has the big hit, Expressway to Your Heart. Uh, there's a lot of other fun songs on here. This band actually had two lead singers, and... Um, it's really fun, colorful label. And uh, again, like being a garage rock band, some of the solos they take on the guitar are kind of not necessarily the right notes for the key of the song, but hey, that just kind of adds to the fun. And talk about soulful garage rock. This is more an indie rock take on that. The raining sound shattered. This is a, another incredible record. This came out in 2014 on Merge Records. Greg Cartwright is the main creative force behind this group. But anyway, the songs are very, very personal. And, um, you know, it rocks. It's got soul and it's got feeling. Booker T and the MG Soul Dressing. This was another one of my flea market finds from ages ago. But uh, it was really good to 
to rediscover this record. It had been sitting on the shelf unplayed for a very long time. And I guess, you know, me moving made me put all my records in boxes and then unpack them again. And it was sort of like rediscovering all the things that I'd forgotten about. And these next few I've discussed in my other videos of my top 2023 finds. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but Charlie Crockett, the man from Waco, a great sort of alt country record from 2022. Spun this one a whole lot this year, like daily for a couple of weeks. Then I found John Vanderslice's Time Travel is Lonely. I love Keep the Dream Alive. It's a great, great record. Great indie rock from 2001. The Olivia Tremor Controls second album was reissued this year. Black Foliage. It's on green vinyl. It's a double LP. Wonderful, experimental, psychedelic, tapey indie goodness. And of course, my mono 13th floor elevators from Sundays. This uh, Demian record, incredible psych rock from Texas. Hard rocking, good stuff, good melodies. We the People, I picked up this reissue. It was also on Sundays. It's on orange vinyl, or not reissue. This is the first issue. It's a collection of singles that were never put on an LP before to my knowledge. And then three o'clock Marion Webster time. This is the Lemon Fog and the Nomads. And that's all I got for now. There, I'm sure there's other records that I've spun a lot, but these were the, the heavy hitters for me in 2023. I spent the most time with these.